my very basic 3D jewelry rendering and animation tutorial in Blender Cycles 4.3. Let's get started. First, let's add an environment. Let's go to World, Color, Environment, Texture. It all goes pink because we need an image. I'm going to use the Brown Photo Studio 02. You can find it on Polyhaven. Google it. It's very easy to find. Now, a very strong advice, never make the render in the same file than your modeling file because we are going to alter the geometry and make a lot of things. And the modeling file is generally a lot heavier and we need to clean up. So let's go to File, Save As and save a render file. If you do that, you'll be happy. Now, remember that we have all the parts of the ring of the modeling. If you haven't followed the modeling tutorial, please be my guest and make the modeling tutorial first. Thank you. And come back to this 3D jewelry rendering tutorial. Okay, so we have all the elements separated and that's something we're going to keep like this at first. So let's go to shading. Now select whatever part of the ring and add a new material. We're going to call it gold. Add an RGB node connected to base color. Add an ambient occlusion node connected in the middle. Use the max samples, distance 10, and give it a gold color. Metallic 1, Roughness 0 0.05. Now it's time to select the entire jewel. I'm going to do it with the box selection. B, I'm going to select my entire ring, all the elements. My first element is the highlighted one. Object, link, transfer data, link materials. Now we're also going to apply the auto smooth to all the elements. Go to object. Press the Alt key and go to Shade Auto Smooth. That's going to apply to all the elements thanks to the Alt key. Now is also a good time to save and be happy. Now let's add Mesh Plane, size 350. It's going to be the floor. Let's bring it to the level of the ring and create a new material. Floor, bring an RGB and an ambient occlusion node. Distance 25. And now let's go back to the gold material. So we are going to add a color HSV node here before the ambient occlusion. Here you can tweak the hue as wanted and the saturation. Maybe you want it lighter, not too saturated, or maybe you want it warmer, more red in the mix. I'm happy with this. Take the time to correct the tone of your gold. Obviously, if you want white gold, bring the saturation to zero and that will do the trick. I will keep yellow gold. Now we're going to add a bevel node to the normals. And here we're going to tweak the strength of the bevel. Now also we're going to bring a Gabor texture the value to the normal and add a vector bump here. The value goes to the height. Now we're going to add a texture coordinates generated to the vector of the Gabor and then a mapping node in between. It's time to adapt the scale and the strength of the bump. A very slight effect to make our gold a bit less flat. Keep tweaking. Now, if you wonder why the mapping node, it allows you to, by example, rotate the effect, change the scale of the effect and change the position of the effect. And that's always welcome. Then also, what about the ambient occlusion node here on the gold? What does it do? And remember, we set the distance to 10, but why 10 and not 50 or one? So let's set the distance to one and observe. You can see here on the inside, very clearly something is changing. That's because here now there's no occlusion. The light is getting on the inside very easily. So here we can start tweaking the distance we like because with more distance, more occlusion and less light is getting there. At one, there's almost no occlusion. At five, the occlusion on the inside is almost complete. So maybe you would like some bounces to keep 
some interesting light effect on the inside of your gold. So I'm going to stay at three for my specific scene. Don't forget to save and be happy. Now we're going to add a light point light X minus 40 Y 40 Z 40 power 8,500 use nodes strength 320 radius of the light three tweak the position of the light as you wish and also the strength as needed now we're also going to add a camera and we're going to set the view to the camera alt control zero the position of the camera zero on x and whatever works for you set the resolution of the camera to a square format and don't forget to tweak the focal length as needed save and be happy now our little camera is up there to the left i'm going to add a bezier circle to the same height than the camera now i'm going to scale my circle to the position of the camera like this don't forget to use a high resolution on your curve the bezier circle is going to be the path now select the camera you can make it bigger in the display if you like that's just a detail now let's go to constraints add object constraint follow path the target is the bezier circle now our camera is gone that's because the camera has a location. Set the location back to zero and we can see the camera back to the circle because now it follows the circle. And if you add a location, it's going to move away from that location. Select the circle, go to data, path animation, frames. I'm going to create 600 frames. Select the camera, go back to constraints, and click animate path now go to output the end frame is 599 now hit the space bar and look at what's going on the camera is following the path yet the camera is not looking to the ring we need a target for that add empty plane axis set it to the center or wherever you like call that the target now select the camera, go to constraints. Now add a track to constraint. The target is the empty target. Now let's go to the camera view and hit space. We can see that the camera is now looking at the ring. Now many people often ask me why I make the camera rotate instead of the jewel rotating. The answer is very simple. When the camera rotates around the object, you get a more natural result of somebody looking around the ring and you get more light and environment reflections variations on the ring giving you a prettier and more interesting result even in such a simple 3d jewelry animation scene stop the animation go to output create a frames folder go inside that folder and name the frames as you wish my jewelry animation frames accept now all the files will be named like that with their respective number for the file format i will save a png sequence the color rgb because we're not using transparencies and I will use a 0% compression to keep the maximum quality. Now, don't forget to set the samples for your render. I'm going to use the open image denoiser at the highest settings. That's albedo normal, the accurate prefilter quality high. I will be using max bounces of 256 for the light path. Now I can go to render, render animation and blender cycles is going to render all the frames and save them in the folder with the names you've created earlier. Now here you can see the time that it takes for each frame. So obviously the amount of samples is going to affect a lot the rendering time. Here instead of 320, I went with 64 to get the rendering time per frame around four seconds on my computer so the entire animation is going to take around 50 minutes 
to complete rendering. And obviously, you're going to learn that rendering animations take hours and days sometimes, depending your hardware. Obviously, if you invest in a very high-end professional hardware, it's still going to take a couple of minutes. So now, this is very pretty. I have all my frames on my disk, but this is not an animation yet. This is a PNG image sequence. So obviously, there are many softwares that you could use now to create the animation, but we are in Blender and we can do this in Blender. So to do that, let's go to Blender. Let's go to the plus icon here, video editing and video editing. This is the famous video sequence editor, the VSE. Now we're going to create the animation. In output, I'm going to use a vertical resolution, 4K. The frame rate now is important. I'm going to use 60 FPS. Down here, this is a timeline. Now I can go to my files on my disk. I can drag and drop all the frames. Here you can slide the stripe with a right mouse click. Let's move it exactly to frame one. The frame count is not going to change. The output needs to change. Beware, very important. So let's call this my 3D jewelry animation video, accept. Okay, and the file format now needs to change. I don't want no image sequence anymore. So now here we want to use the movie export. That's the famous FFmpeg video. Okay, and the encoding. So the encoding, the container, here we have very famous containers, QuickTime, AVI, MPEG. I'm going to use the MPEG-4, the Kodak H264. It is one of the most used formats. The default settings are good in this occasion. Adapt the output to create the video file using that container. MPEG-4, H264, the output is set. And now let's make a render animation, Control F12. And you're going to see that this is going to go a lot faster because this is not rendering anymore. This is video compression process. And now here on my disk, I have my video file. I can double click it and play my animation. Obviously, then you can add sounds and music and do whatever you want on the creative side to create any 3D jewelry animation you desire. This was my very basic 3D jewelry rendering and animation tutorial in Blender Cycles 4.3. Take care of yourselves. Be nice to the planet. Be nice to animals. And see you soon.